Hello, and welcome back to the next episode of The Four Horsemen. My name is Paul, representing Diecast Graveyard. Back in January, my other three friends, Keith from Outlaw Speed Shop, Jeff from 164 Revival, and Xavier from Diecast Show Customs, all joined together to form the group The Four Horsemen. Once a month, one of the members picks a casting and a theme. Well, this month's casting is from Keith at Outlaw Speed Shop. He picked a 1964 Nova Wagon gasser, and the theme is Pro Street, and the car also has to be slammed, which means it needs to be hugging the ground. Well, this is going to be a really interesting build. I've never done a slammed car before, but this is going to be a lot of fun, and I love working with these guys because we always push each other to get better with our skills. Let's go ahead and get started on this build. Let's go ahead and get the car apart. This is a very common car and I'm going to use this other 64 Nova wagon as a base. Well the supervisor's here too. Don't forget to check out the other builds with the links in the comments. Please if you're not a subscriber please go ahead and subscribe. And if you're not a subscriber of the other guys' channels, subscribe to them because they're fantastic builders and you can learn a lot from them. Okay, so we take this 64 gasser apart. Well, we're not going to use the base because the car has to be slammed. Here we'll take apart this other Nova station wagon. I'm going to use the base out of the regular Nova station wagon. We're going to have to cut out these posts. Now I already have another car just like this that I was experimenting with and I'm going to use that body instead. But it's the same body and everything. Like I said, you're going to have to trim these posts in order to get that to fit. It just doesn't fit very well like this obviously. So those are one of the things that you'll have to experiment with. Now again, like I said, these cars are incredibly regular. I'm going to reuse the engine out of the gasser, but I'm going to have to cut off the headers and trim up the back in order to get that to fit on the new base. Now the other thing I've noticed is that the base of the regular station wagon, the front end piece, the grill, doesn't mate up good to the new front end as you see here. So what I'm going to have to do is cut that front end off the regular station wagon and use the grill section from the gasser wagon in order to get it to fit properly. But with those big header pipes sticking out of the base, the wheels won't fit. So I'm going to have to cut those headers off and then mate the grill and the engine itself to the new base. It's just slightly different even though supposedly it's the same. So let's go ahead and get this front end cut off using these plastic sprue cutters. They come in pretty handy. I mean, I use them to cut the little tabs out of the base to take the wheels out, etc. And you can use them to cut the metal base out also. But you're going to have to be careful because they will wear out on you. We still got a lot of cutting and trimming to do. Here's the base out of the regular wagon. Now we're going to fit up some wheels. I'm going to put some real riders on here. Now there's an awful lot of axles sticking out, so we're going to have to trim the axle and cut it down and pinch it so it will fit properly on the new base. So I'll have to cut that much off, well almost that much. You need to leave a little tab on there in order to pinch the axle so the wheels won't come off. Now I'm going to use these fence pliers to do that. Like I said, once I figure out how much of the axle I have to cut off, I'm going to use my little snips here. Now be careful here because those, that little piece of axle will fly. So you should wear your safety glasses when you're doing this. Take the axle, put it in the very end of the fence pliers, and give it a really hard squeeze. That'll flatten the end so the wheels won't come off. Now I need to do that to the axle for the back. It's got a little bit of play and it needs to have a little bit of play if you're going to have the car roll. 
So we'll cut off approximately the same amount of wire. Again, that thing will fly, so be careful. Give it a good pinch. If you have it on the very end, it'll fly out, which means you didn't pinch it enough. There you go, that's good. See how it flanges out like that? That'll fit really nice now. It's got a little bit of play in there, like I said, but it needs to roll. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click on that little bell to be alerted to any future videos that come out. And please subscribe because you know what? It doesn't cost you anything. And if you like to watch these videos, we got a lot of videos that come out during the week. And my friends, their pages, they do a lot of videos also. And you should subscribe to them also if you're not subscribed to them already. Maybe just had to pinch it a little bit more. Now the rims on the inside of this thing are gloss black. I think that's going to go good with that kind of subdued look that I'm trying to accomplish here. They'll fit right in place. Now here's the replacement body. I've already cut out the post like I was saying. It's the same kind of car and the same kind of casting. I already had this one with the post cut out because I was experimenting to begin with. So this works out pretty good for me. Look how nice and slammed that is. Check that out. We definitely accomplished what we were looking for there. Now I did have to grind on the inside of the front fender wells in order to give the wheels a little bit of room to roll. So that's something you got to be aware of also. All this stuff guys is an experiment. A little cut here, a little snip there, a little sanding there, a little filing there. Now we had to cut that plastic piece out for the interior so we could get that engine to fit also. And this is all trial by fire. Take those sprue cutters, cut that piece off, and then trim it up. Just keep trimming away till you're comfortable with what you need. And you're going to have to fit and refit and cut and file and snip and sand. And you're just going to have to keep on doing it till you get it the way you want to. Just only, only take off little bits though. Well, the wheel isn't exactly laying flat in there, but that's nice. Definitely took away that gasser aspect of the car. You may have to cut a little bit more of the post off on the inside, but that's uh, that's looking pretty good. Once I get the wheels set where I, where I want to, I'm liable just to take a little bit of uh, super glue and glue them in place so they don't move around side to side. You got to be careful there because when I went to put the windshield in. This was the windshield off the other regular Nova station wagon and I had to cut that plastic out of the way in order to get the windshield to fit because I like the tinted windshield better than I did the other one. <clears throat> We're definitely on our way here. This is looking pretty good. Nice. Let's go ahead and continue on here and we'll figure out how we're going to attach the base to the body since there's no more posts. So we'll have to figure out a way to epoxy or glue the base in. Here again, like I said, I put a little dab of the gel type super glue. You don't want to use the, the thin liquid stuff here because the thin liquid stuff will run 
and it will go down into your axle and your wheel and it will freeze the wheel. Now, just as I was pointing out there, I cracked the front end of the grill, so I had to glue that back together too. So here I am just mocking up the engine in place and putting it in there and setting it around and not realizing that underneath the super glue from the wheels or the axle that I put in there and the super glue for the grill where I just glued that back together is still there. And I think you're all going to be able to guess what happens here. Once I got that engine set up where I wanted to, fortunately, the super wet super glue that was already in there grabbed a hold of it and glued it in place. So where it was is where it ended up. Something to be aware of and be careful. If you've got wet super glue in the area and you're touching it with other parts, you're liable to glue them in place. So there's today's tip from your Uncle Polly. I'm definitely liking where this is going though. A little bit of adjustments here and there and you'll be able to fix it. There you can see the crack in the grill that I had to fix. Once I got it glued in place and I sanded it down just a little bit, then I went ahead and I used the Molotow Chrome pen and it filled in nicely. Looking good. Let's move on. Alright, well now we're going to have to strip the paint off this body, so we're going to dip it in the embalming fluid. There we go, and just knock off the excess. I found that this tray method works a little bit better. Now, I use the citrus strip or in my case the embalming fluid. I do have the aircraft stripper and it's a great product and it works extremely well except it gives off really really bad fumes and it will fill your your house your garage whatever with these bad fumes. Now I save it for if I've got to strip something quick because it does. Now even the citrus strip that I use here excuse me embalming fluid the uh, it works really well sometimes it just takes a little bit longer well, when I was done, I scrubbed it down with a toothbrush and I used my Zep degreaser and scrubbed it all down. Now that's looking really sharp. Look at those wheels on there. They fit absolutely perfect. Looking good. Wheels roll really clean. Nice. Let's move on. Here I've detailed the engine a little bit. I used some regular Sharpie markers. I used an orange and a bright blue uh, Sharpie marker to detail the engine. I just wasn't really set with how the blue looked on there. I thought it would look good, but it just didn't fit with this paint scheme. So I went ahead and changed it a little bit later. Now with the paint I'm going to put down, the very first color I'm putting down here is gloss black. And I got this paint from the Redline shop. This is an opaque gloss black and you can paint it over the top of the car without having to use a primer. Now you can use a primer if you want to, but it's completely unnecessary and a step that you don't need to do. Every time you put down a layer of paint on a car, if the car has details on it, like door jams and handles for your doors and gas cover caps and like that, every time you paint over something, it fills in a little bit more of that detail. So think about that when you're putting down all these coats of paint. If you don't want the detail to go away, you've got to go as light as possible with the paint. Now we're going to be using a color changing paint here that I got from the Redline shop. John sends me occasionally something new that he's trying or something older that he's had that he tried back when that he says here give this a shot and see if you like it. So here I'm using this color changing paint. It changes from a copper to a green to a purple. It's uh, pretty cool looking stuff but I hadn't used it before. So I wanted to try it on here to see what it would do. 
I love trying new stuff. I love experimenting with paints and the textures and the finishes and, and things like that. So this is another one of those times. Just put down your mist coat, let it dry for about 10 minutes, and then put on a little bit more. Let that dry, put it on a little bit more. Now I don't mean dry, I mean tack up and get let it get a little bit sticky. I'm using approximately 25 to 30 pounds of pressure here as I paint it with my compressor and my airbrush. Just remember that the more pressure you use, let's say you get up into the 35 and the 40 pounds and like that, your paint is going to go through your gun so fast. The more pressure you have, the more paint comes out of your gun. And there's your second tip today from your Uncle Pauly. That's looking pretty good. That's a pretty wild color. The uh, green's kind of got a gold hue to it, or a gold tinge to it. Man, that went down nice. That's going to be super nice when it's done and dry. I thought about putting some decals on there, but the decals really didn't look good for what I wanted to put on there. So I just went ahead and left it base. Here we've got all the parts together. We've got this color changing paint that looks absolutely beautiful. I detailed up the door handles, the lights, and the radiator. That looks really good. I re-detailed up the engine. There's your interior. That looks good too, but I didn't touch anything with that. Yeah, I touched up the engine a little bit better. I like that red on top and the valve covers I went with an opaque orange, so that looks a lot nicer. The windshield, that's nice. It is what it is. Let's put it all together and see what we got. Here we got this 64 Nova Gasser that we got from Keith from the Outlaw Speed Shop. This was his month's selection for the four horsemen build. Next month it's going to be mine and it's going to be pretty wild. That's looking good. I've never slammed a car, but this is what we got to. Look at how nice the paint turned out on that. And that's what it is with these pro street cars. They look like sleepers, but man, I'll tell you what, they will tear you up on the street if you happen to go up against one. That beautiful paint from the Redline shop, my wheels, um, we did a beautiful wheel swap there. That looks fantastic. The engine is detailed. That looks good. Man, this is just, uh, this has been a really, really fun build, and I enjoyed it. I can't wait to uh, do next month's build. I'll give you a little bit of a clue. Next month's build is Oktoberfest. Now, since Oktoberfest this year was canceled, and I've been there several, several times, and it's just a wonderful experience, and I'm disappointed that it's not going to happen this year because of the COVID. But what a nice car. I took it outside in the sun. Really wasn't too sunny of a day, unfortunately. But look how nice that turned out. The sparkle, the color changing abilities of that paint, the detailed engine, that just really looks nice. Beautiful. Very happy with that. Now I've got a Patreon page. I'd like to say thank you to my Patreon members. Grim Reaper Level, William Robinson, Dale Johnson, Richard Reese, and Ed Ostrander. Mortician level, Jay Rademacher, new member Ray Berger, Berger, Jason Warren, Air Warrior Coffee, Funeral Director, Double B's Customs, Diecast Sheriff, and Dave Christensen. Check out Diecast Sheriff's YouTube page, please. Grave Digger, John Sellers, YouTube page, check him out. Keith Kripe, Johnny Hicks, Paul Bearer level, Gary Tasker. All these folks help me out, guys. Jim Silva, check out his YouTube page. Richard at Missy O. Woods Garage, he sells Hot Wheels. Ronald Raby, Steve Terrence, thank you guys. Join the team today. The link is in the comments for the Patreon page. I sure could use your help. Here's looking forward to the next four horsemen build next month for September, and the theme is Oktoberfest. 
check out the other guys builds the links will be in the comments fantastic builders subscribe to them subscribe to me everybody have a great month we'll see you next month